Shalom family, much love to you. It's Big Brother Tony, Elder Tony coming at you again. I got a word from the Most High. Uh, I've been fasting this whole day today and wanting to get something out to you all. We had a busy weekend with the baptisms we had on both uh, Saturday and Sunday. It was such a blessing, such a moving this whole weekend. Oh, it did something to my spirit. It did something to me. Me and my wife, we just, we're in a place in the Most High that's so beautiful right now. And this message, the Ruach HaKadosh just gave me this message just a few moments ago. And I tried to get this word earlier today while I was at work and she wouldn't let me do it. And she gave it to me. And I wrote it down on my, you know, when she gives my downloads, I, I write them down and I, I've got it here. What we're going to do is allow the Holy Spirit to teach this message unto you. And we're just going to be obedient. I'm going to be obedient unto the Heavenly Father, unto the Ruach HaKodesh, and unto Yeshaya. Uh, because this is a message with the warnings that are going forth and things like that. There is something that we must do at Zion and we must take heed of. And where the separation, the spiritual separation, there are so many things involved in this spiritual separation that's coming forth. And so what we need to do is understand how we should stay focused. We, we should stay on the right path, the narrow path that leads to the kingdom. Uh, and so I want to start out, we're going to go with... Um, our first verse is going to be Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So let's go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it reads, And be not conformed to this world. That word conform means don't pattern yourselves after the ways of the world. Okay? Now we know even in the Christian church, the pattern of the world had crept up in the church. So that's one of the things that we're going to have to snap off. We're going to have to break that tie. Okay? To some of the things that they, you know, some of the, the ways that they had to where they patterned themselves after the world. So that's the tie that we're going to have to break now and walk away from. We're going to have to just, just begin to just stay focused. I'm telling you, there is so much up ahead. And even uh, Apostle Ayil, he issued those warnings. We've been issuing warnings, but things are getting ready to go through. That things are getting ready to happen and you want to be the, on the right side. You want to be on the side where it's going to be the most high's mercy and his favor will be upon you. You want to be on that side. Okay. You don't want to be on the side where it's going to be the most high's wrath. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to go through this word because the Holy Spirit gave me this word to give to you. And it, and it hit me first and, it, and it's still dealing with me. And so that's why I got on my, my, my stripes today. And you're going to find out why. Because I'm about to catch a case up in here. So I, I, I'm telling y'all, we got to go. We got to do this thing right. We got to be, get focused. We got to get, I mean, you better tune it up. You better turn it up all the way, all the way until you get into his presence and enjoy the fullness of his presence. We got to get there. We got to get into his presence each and every day. We got to seek him more now. We got to have, I mean, you walk, you talk with him, you have communication with him everywhere you go. This is the time where we, our actions and everything we do is proven to the world who we really are. We can't just be talking all this talk. We got to show them. We got to be about this thing and everything that we do. So this is the time we have to prove to the world, even though they want to doubt, even though they want to, they want to discredit us for being the true children of Israel. It's time for us to rise up because he's getting ready to do a work through us. So we want to be on the side of that favor. We don't want to be on the side of his wrath. Okay, the most high is getting ready to unleash some things. So we want to be on the right side of it. So in Romans 12, 2, it says, and be not conformed to this world. Don't pattern yourselves after this world. But be ye transformed. That word transformed, one of the meanings of that word means change. Okay? Be willing to change for the most high. Because you have a spiritual man that's growing up on the inside of you that's going towards the kingdom. And so he's going to change you from the ways of this world. He's going to take the taste of this world out of your mouth. He's going to change you 
Be ye transformed. He's transforming you. Why? Because watch this next one. It said by the renewing of your mind. What means that word renewing right there is dealing with your mind going through a renovation. You know how you get a renovation done on your home and everything else? And you get you 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 redesign everything and it's totally different from what what, what it started out to be, right? So this is what's happening in your mind. Your mind got used to thinking in the flesh before you became born again. Your mind got used to thinking like the world, in the flesh, doing those things, right? But now with this, this new creature that's on the inside of you, he said change. Now you got to, your mind is being renovated by this new creature. Your mind is going through a spiritual renovation. So you have to be willing to change into that spiritual man. Stop fighting against him or her. It's on the inside of you. You are a spiritual creature. If any man be in Yeshia, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. There is a new creature on the inside. So you have to be willing to change to that spiritual because he has to teach you. He has to renovate because your soul and your everything on the inside is shaped after the flesh. So he done stepped in and he done quickened, the Holy Spirit done quickened your mortal body and this new man and this new woman came out, right? This new being came in, was birthed in you that the Holy Spirit gave birth to. And so now we have to be willing to change to the spiritual. But there's a fight, there's a battle on the inside of us. We have to be willing to change. We have to be, let me say it one more time. You got to be willing to change. Willing to change. Willing to change. Willing to change. Set that up in your spirit. I am willing to change. Most high, I am willing to change. I am willing to change to the renovation of my mind, to how my mind is being renovated. It's being changed. And so it's going to come out better. See, the most high is renovating at this time. Before, it was the man of the flesh that was shaping your mind. But the most high is renovating it now. So allow him to renovate it and be willing to change to that renovation. Be willing to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Be willing to be led of the spirit and not of the flesh. You hear what I'm saying? Go into this thing. Know people after the spirit and not of the flesh. Go after the things of the spirit. Be ye transformed. Have a spiritual mind and not that carnal mind. Get that. Oh, we're going to. We're getting ready to get into this thing. It's, it's not a whole lot the Holy Spirit gave me, but guess what? She is on this thing. She is on it because she's telling us to get our focus right now because it's getting ready to come down. It's getting ready to hit hard. People are going to go through some things that they have never been through very soon. And you need to be strong enough and be on the side of the, of the Most High's mercy, His favor, and His grace for His people. Don't be on the side of His wrath. So let's go forth in, in this Romans 2. He said, be, be ye, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, okay, that word prove right there, what we're going to do with prove, that word prove, one of the meanings of that is to test. And one of the meanings of that is to try. And there's another meaning of prove I want to just, just, just hit, hit, hit just, just make it, just tap into you. Just tap into you, okay? There's another meaning that means to allow. See, what you allow right now is going to weigh heavy in your life. There are some things you have to let go of. There are some things you have to say no to. There are some things you're going to have to reject. There are some things you can no longer give place to. So the spiritual man, while he's renewing your mind and you change it to that renewing of your mind, you allow him to, to do the work in you that's necessary so that you can keep your focus on the kingdom and you can stay on the path to the kingdom. So you allow that spiritual man to work in you to do that, okay? Because now we have to allow those spiritual things to come forth in our lives, whereas before when we in sin, we denied the spiritual things. Now we have to allow those spiritual things. We have to prove them. We have to allow them. And when we allow them, then it gives us a gift called discernment, which is a part of proving too. You can discern what is good and what is righteous, what is not. But we have to we have to be willing to change. We have to be willing to get into this mindset that's no longer carnal. This spiritual mindset, oh, y'all got to get here. We, we getting ready to go on a journey right now. And we got to get this thing in your spirit. This is serious business. This is no longer playing church. See, we can't be doing like we were taught in the Christian church where we can sit back on, on the word and just do as we please. No, 
you got to get focused because every every ounce of this word that's coming across this internet that y'all gotten, every time y'all heard this word, everything that y'all heard, you are accountable for it. So since you are accountable for this word, then you have to allow the spiritual things, the things that are of faith, those things that are of righteousness, those things that are, are good and that are of the kingdom to come forth in your life. You will have to prove this thing. He's not saying the leaders right here in Romans 12 and 2. He's talking about everybody. All of you born again. He's talking about all of us, what we must do, what we must do. This is a lifestyle that we must adhere ourselves unto. It is a lifestyle. We, we have to change. And this ain't talking about living your best life. No, it's living his best life, getting the best and applying it to your life. Getting the best from the most high. And applying it to, to your life. Doing that thing. Performing that thing. And proving it. Allowing the things of the kingdom. To manifest in your life. Allowing the will of the most high. To manifest in your life. Allowing the things that pleases the most high. To manifest in your life. Allowing those things that are righteous. To manifest in your life. Allowing those things that are holy. To oh. Get them going in your life. Get them going. Oh, I'm fired up tonight. I'm fired up. I'm fired up because I'm, 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 I'm excited about what the Holy Spirit is doing. But you know what? There's a caution in my spirit because if you don't take heed to these warnings and what's going on, this is very time sensitive information. It's time sensitive. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that. Okay, so let's go further on. It says, prove what is that good and acceptable. Okay. Good is something that, now, when we talk about good, we're not talking about something that makes you happy right here, okay? This word good is what we're dealing with is what, how we benefit, we get benefits from the most high. When it, come, when it talks about good from the kingdom and from the most high, everything that is good that is given unto us from the most high, it's a benefit for us. It benefits our lives. That's why I said his blessings add what? No sorrow. You hear? It's a benefit. Everything he gives us is good and it's beneficial. And so this good is dealing with what is beneficial. So we can prove what is beneficial because guess what? We're going to better testimony of what's beneficial. We're going to better testimony of how he blessed us and the good things he's done for us. You hear what I'm saying? We're going to bear that. All things work together for the good for them who are the called according to. So come on now. The good. The beneficial. All things work together for the good. It's beneficial. It's going to benefit our lives. It's going to add to our lives. It's going to preserve our lives. It's going to benefit our lives. It's going to, it's going to cause our lives to have more value. It's going to enrich our lives. So this is the good we're talking about, that which is beneficial, but it's beneficial from where? The kingdom. Not of this world, but from the kingdom. So let's deal with this, okay? So uh, I'm going, I'm moving. <laughs> that you may prove what is good and acceptable, okay? What is well-pleasing? See, when you want to find out what is acceptable, sometimes we say, we don't know what the will of the Most High is. Find out what pleases Him. And you know sin don't please Him. So you can't go out there with the wrong intentions, with the wrong desires, with the, with the wrong attitude and everything, trying to say you're doing the will of the Most High. What pleases Him? What is well-pleasing unto Him? We have to think on those things. And we know that everything that pleases him, we can find that in his word. We can find the righteousness in his word, the goodness in his word, that which is sanctified for his kingdom. We can find these things that please him. We try to make it so hard sometimes and we want to go out and do our thing. See, and we want to claim it as the will of the most high, but it's pleasing us. It's well pleasing to us, but not always well pleasing to the most high. So pray before you do a lot of stuff. Pray before you make decisions on things. Pray and seek what pleases the most high. Because when it pleases the most high and you do that thing, then guess what happens in your life? Benefits start flowing. It becomes beneficial. Because now you're flowing with the kingdom and you're getting your instructions from the kingdom. So everything according to that which you've asked him for is going to be beneficial coming out of the kingdom unto your lives. And it will benefit you here on this earth. It will tear down these walls on this earth that they have built up to stop you. It will hinder you. It will break down this stuff because it will be beneficial to launch you forward to fulfill the will of the most high in your life. 
So you want to look at it that way. You want to see it that way. You want to grow in it that way. You got to grab onto it that way. Everything you think, stop thinking about yourself and what you desire and what you want. You got 20 pairs and 30 pairs of shoes in the closet. You hear what I'm saying? When is enough enough? Come on. Let's get on this thing. Let's be real with this thing. Let's do this thing right. Okay, so now what? Let's go further home. Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect. That word perfect right there. Look at here. That word perfect doesn't mean without flaw. That word perfect means mature. Okay? That word perfect means spiritual growth. Okay? It means doing away. Don't be tossed to and fro like babes on the milk. Tossed to and fro. You're, you're maturing. You're growing now to where you ain't tossed to and fro like a babe. You're maturing. You're becoming perfected. Because now you're stable, you're strong in this faith. And so now you can't be, you know, washed away. You can't be tossed to and fro like the babes. You can't be lukewarm. Now you're in it all the way to win it, all the way to the kingdom. You're in it to win it. So you, you, you're mature, you're strong in this faith, and you, you're growing in this faith. And so that's what this is dealing with. This word perfect is dealing with maturity more than anything else is dealing with maturity. So now that you get, got this word, you put these books together, your eyes have been opened and you're going into this order of Melchizedek, which is the highest order. We, may, we, we need to be mature to walk in the highest order. You hear what I'm saying? Our maturity needs to match the order that we're walking in. We need to put it up on that level. That's how we have to do it. So now let's go, it says in the perfect will of, of God, okay, or the perfect will of the Most High. Okay, so now we prove it. We'll be able to prove, we'll be able to allow the will of the Most High in our lives, and by us allowing this will of the Most High in our lives, other people can witness the will of the Most High and what it is here in the earth by seeing our example, okay? So we have to walk in this thing. We have to be for real with this thing. This ain't no time. This, oh no. This, no, no. We, we ain't joking around here, no. No, we passed the joke stage. Because we hit the spirituality stage. We walking in the spirit. We've been growing in the spirit. And the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, is taking us into the fullness of this thing. So since she's taking us on a plane that's just going higher and higher and higher, we just got to get in the seats, grab on to whatever she's doing, and flow with her. We got to go with this. This is time for us to flow with the spirit because what's getting ready to hit, we got to be mature enough to handle it. We have to understand that things getting ready to happen in this earth, and we're going to be needed greatly. So we need to prepare ourselves and equip ourselves and, and make sure we are in a position where we are allowing ourselves to grow and get this word and grow in this thing. We have to get to that place. Okay, we have to hold ourselves accountable. The Bible tells us to work out our own salvation. So we have to work this thing out now. It's time for us to do the work. Not just let somebody else in leadership do the work for us. Not let somebody else, you know, who's the pastor, the preacher, the leader, the teacher, the whoever else, rely upon others. It's time for us to do the work, to grow in this thing, to mature in this thing, and hold ourselves accountable so that we can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Okay, it's time for us to get in there. It's time for us to do, dig in. Dig all the way in. Dig in. Like you're a soldier now. You're a soldier of the Most High Order of Melchizedek. You're a soldier. Dig in. You're getting ready. Prepare. you ready. Go for it. You're getting ready to have some of the best weapons of the kingdom open up unto you through this Order of Melchizedek. So get ready for it. Prepare for it. Prepare to use the gifts. Prepare to use every weapon that's in this order. Prepare to use it. We're getting ready to go some places. So we have to know that we are the part of Zion that has been separated from all of this other clique stuff, all this other camp stuff, all this other Gentile, abominable church stuff. We have to know that we are separate and we have to live as though we're separate and we have to be as though we're separate and we have to acknowledge that we are separate in everything we do and say. So we have to get to that point. We have to do that. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 8, uh, chapter 5. And let's start at verse 8. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Holy Spirit gave me this just a while ago before I started. But we're just going to flow with what the Holy Spirit gave me. And let's, 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 let's just enjoy uh, the Holy Spirit, getting a word from the Holy Spirit today. So let's just enjoy it. So Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8, it says, For we, 
For ye were sometimes darkness. See, there was sometimes we were in ignorance. So now that we have been brought into this light, we have been brought into this understanding, right? We are equipped to succeed in the kingdom. Do you know? He has equipped you to succeed in the, in the kingdom by bringing you into this understanding. So let's use the equipment that he has given us, these two books, these understandings, these words, these, all these books we're putting together. And we're, getting this, we're getting our words back. We're getting our scriptures back. We're getting our books back. We're getting things back that were taken from us. We're getting things back that were sealed and unsealed for such a time as this. We're getting all this stuff. It means he's equipping us. He's giving us the equipment. So we got to use the equipment he has given us. We got to use that equipment, okay? Let's use it. Let's, get, let's, let's pick it up. Let's use it. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's flow with this thing. Let's roll with this thing. Everywhere. Let's do this thing, okay? So Ephesians 5 verse 8, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are ye light in the Most High, okay? And that light means it, it, he, he's put you in a position now to where you can't hide in the dark no more. See, in a Christian church, you can go into church and you can hide for 20 years in the congregation and never do nothing. But now he done launch you forward. You can't hide no more. We break. We gotta break that. That's a tie we gotta break. That tie thinking we and we gotta we gotta uh, allow other people to do it for us, or they they can do it. I don't have to do it. I just want to get here and just get what I want. I'll get me a little word and I leave for the day. No, no, you got to be the light now. That means he's put you in a position where you're gonna shine. And you're going to be manifested in front of others. He's going to make you shine and manifest in front of others. He's going to manifest that light, that goodness, everything about his kingdom that he put in you. He's getting ready to manifest you in front of others. So you can't hide no more. He's doing the manifestation. So here we go. Right here in verse 8. But now are ye light in him. In who? In the most high. You're light in him. So he is the one that's making you shine now. He is the one that's manifesting you as the light of his glory. He is the one that's doing it. So you can't be here. Huh? You're a light on the hill, which what? Can I be here? So don't stop trying to hide. Stop trying to get in the background. Stop trying to stay in the background and do nothing. It's time for you to get ready. Grab onto this word. You are, you've got the equipment. The Most High is giving you your equipment. Use your equipment. Put on the full armor of the Most High. He's giving you your armor. He's giving you every weapon you need now. So it's time for us to use what he has given us. He wants us to use it. Don't sit back and just watch other people. And you be happy. How can you be happy with all this word and sitting back and watching other people do the work? And you getting all this word. You just sitting fat and not, not even using it. Huh? How can you be happy with that? You can't be happy with that. Come on now. We got to get we got to get better. We got to do better. We got to make ourselves activate ourselves in this kingdom and move. Big kingdom movers, man. Just go in this kingdom and roll with it. I'm telling you, it's time for us to go. We, we getting ready to set up a whole brand new style of nation upon this planet. A nation that is a light that can't be hid. That's going to break through this darkness of this world. That's going to show this world how to operate in the most high. You hear what I'm saying? So we, we get ready to be manifested. He's in the process of manifesting us. So you prepare for that manifestation. Don't let them find you naked and stripped without all your weapons and all your equipment that you're supposed to have from the most high you stripped huh when he manifests you all of a sudden you strip come on we got to be equipped we got to be ready this red we got to be ready we got to be ready okay so the verse 8 he says but now ye are light in the most high walk as children of light walk walk go walk step in I like, there's a meaning of the word walk that, that came to me that I really love. I had wrote it down. Let me see. I got it right here. It means to be occupied with. So everything the Most High has given us to be that light and how he's getting ready to manifest us as the light, right? We need to be occupied with everything he's doing. We need to be occupied with this word that we're getting. We need to be occupied with everything we're hearing, the instruction we're getting. We need to be occupied. We need to be praying from sun up to sun down. We need to be occupied. We need to be focused on the will of the Most High. We need to be occupied. We need to be a light unto others. We need to be occupied. We need to have this charity so we can reach out for the needs when the needs manifest themselves in our environment, in the atmospheres that we walk into. We need to be occupied. We need to be occupied with this. We need to be ready. Are y'all getting this? We need to be occupied. Walk. 
<laughs> Walk in it. Walk as children of light. Okay? Walk in it. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Most High. Here we go with that proving again. You see what I'm saying? Proving, allowing what is acceptable. We're allowing. We're denying the things that are not acceptable. We're allowing the things that are acceptable. Okay? That's one way of proving. You hear what I'm saying? Start allowing the things that are acceptable to the Most High in your life. And we're going to have to get on this thing because it's time for us to start proving it. It's time to start proving it. It's time for us to stop saying, well, I'm born again. I'm an Israelite. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. And this, that, and the other. I'm, I'm one of the chosen children of the kingdom. Uh, we one of the chosen people. And it's time to start proving it. It's start walking in this thing. Allow what the Most High approves in His Word to manifest in your life. So that you can be that children, that child of light. So when He manifests you, you are a light that is bright that cannot be hid. And then when they see you, they see the Father. See, he's trying to get himself in you. So he, everything that he says he's going to allow in his word, he wants you to allow that in you. So that when they see you, they see him. They see what he allows, what he approves, what he calls righteousness, what he calls holiness, what he calls godliness. Huh? So they're going to see that. Let them see that so that when they see you, they see the Father. So they can look at you and say, I thank the most high for you. And some of them will say, I thank God for you. But let them, because they see him in you. Okay? So we, we got to get there. We got to get there. We can't hide in the background no more. We can't be shy and timid no more. We got to be bold in this thing. We are a light that cannot be hid. You cannot be hid. So expose yourself. Stay exposed. Be in the open. Don't be ashamed of it. Let that word flow through you. Don't be ashamed of this word. Don't be ashamed of the truth of what's inside of you. Don't be ashamed of it. Let it flow. Okay? Let's go here. Let's go. He, they gave me Mosiah. I got Mosiah. Mosiah. Mosiah chapter 2, verse 20. Mosiah chapter 2, verse 20. Here we go. Let's go on this journey. Y'all ready? Let's go. I'm hoping the Holy Spirit is blessing y'all because the Holy Spirit is just so awesome. I'm so excited right now. <laughs> I'm so excited. But the Holy Spirit is blessing me. It's blessed me. I've, I've got things going on, and, and it's something how how Ayel will say the Holy Spirit will give him something right before he speaks, and I get the same thing right before I speak, and I'm just jotting it down, and I'm just going to flow with what the Holy Spirit has. But let's go to Mosiah. Let's go to Mosiah. We're going to go to chapter 2 on Mosiah. We're going to go to verse 20. We're going to start here, and we're getting ready to hit on some things. We're getting ready to hit it hard and heavy because guess what? You need this. For such a time as this, you need this word, and you need this understanding, you need this instruction, you need this focus, because we got to get focused, because now we got to prove this thing. It's time for us to prove it. It's not time for us to say that we are born again. It's time for us to prove that we are born again. It's not time for us to say that we are Hebrew Israelites. It's time for us to prove that we are Hebrew Israelites. It's not time for us to say we are the true Jews. It's time for us to prove that we are the true Jews, because there are so many mimickers out there there are so many fakers out there there are so many wannabes out there and i'm coming against you i got my prison stripes on because i'm about to catch a case on you because you're doing wrong but we're gonna expose some stuff we're gonna let you know who's truly in control and it ain't you you ain't the commander of your own ship not today not ever and you get ready to get shut down listen you pay attention to because I want you to hear this word. You need this word too. You thinking you the commander of your own ship? You thinking your stuff don't stink? You think you caused everything to happen in your life? You created your success on your own without the help of the Most High? Huh? We're getting ready to show you. We're getting ready to show you where you stand. Let's go. Here we go. Verse 20. Messiah said, I say unto you, my brethren, that if you should render all the thanks. Mm, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you should render all the thanks all the thanks all the thanks and praise which your whole soul has power to possess to that creator who has created you you ain't nothing without the most high 
He said, you got to He said, you should render all the thanks and praise which your whole soul has the power. Everything your whole soul has the power to possess. You render thanks unto the most high. You got to do this thing. Watch this thing. Let's go over here. I got something. I got a scripture. I got a scripture. Let's go. Mm. Mm. Let's go to Job 1 and 21. Job 1 and 21. Oh, my goodness gracious. Job 1 and 21. Okay. This is why you should render the thanks right here. Okay. Anytime somebody tell you to be thankful to the most high and you need to be thankful to the most high instead of complaining and crying and bickering. This is why you need to be thankful. Job 1 and 21, it says, and, and, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Most High gave, and the Most High taken, taken away. Blessed be the name of the Most High. See, you ain't got nothing. You came in this world with nothing, and guess what? You're going to leave this world with nothing. You ain't got nothing. So everything that you have in this world, in this while you walking through this life, everything that you have obtained was given unto you for, by the Most High. Everything that you have done, the ability was given unto you by the Most High. So everything that you've achieved, everything you've done, everything you've obtained, you should be grateful to the Most High for it. You shouldn't be saying, you've done this myself. I've done this on my own. Ain't no, what? If I hear an Israelite say, I've done this on my own, I'm going to pimp slap you. That don't make no kind of sense. Everything. You come in here naked, you leave here naked. This means you didn't have nothing when you came, and you ain't going to have nothing when you leave. So everything you have, the Most High, the Creator, is the one that manifested and gave those things to you, blessed you with everything, right? And so let's go back to that verse. It says, and praise with your whole soul. You know, our praise shall continually, huh? Praise shall continually be in my mouth. Huh? Praise shall continually be in my mouth. And so when we look at that, that precept or that praise is Psalm 34 and 1. So we're going to read down just a little bit more. We, we're getting ready to go with this thing. I want y'all to understand some things. We're going to learn how to be grateful because you got too many people. I got people right now. Listen here. Listen here. People right now email me. Do you think we really need to be baptized? Do, is it really necessary? Listen here. We done taught lessons. I yield and taught lessons. We done showed you precept upon precept, scripture upon scripture. And my thing is, this last, this last one, I said, you know what? Go, just go watch my video. Watch my video. I, I'm not going to share scriptures with you and try and get into this thing. I said, I, I got precepts in the video. And I yield has a video on baptism. He got pre precepts in his video, too. I ain't got time to start debating everything we done already spoke about. We done gave you a word and you ain't receiving the word. Come on now. Come on now. The scriptures are in the videos. Stop emailing me. Do you think we need to be baptized? Yes, you do. It's a commandment from the Most High. To be born again is necessary. It's required. Yes. According to the order of Melchizedek. Now, if you want to stick it to that Aaronic order, if you want to stick it to the abominable church doctrine, that's on you. But we up in here in the spirit and we obtaining the fullness of the Melchizedek order because the Savior, Yeshua, demonstrated the fullness of the Melchizedek order when he came. So we walking in that thing right there by faith. And so what if, if he had to be baptized, come on now, how much more do you need to be baptized? He was without sin. You supposed to be baptized for the remission of your sin. He was baptized and he was without sin. Who needs it more? We do. Think about it. Come on now. All this backhand. Y'all got to get into this word. Hear this word. Understand this word. Grow into this word. Now watch this. He says, okay. He says, to that most high who has created you and has kept and preserved you. He done preserved you. He has kept you. You ain't kept yourself. You going to the gym, working out, and you trying to eat all these healthy foods and do all this other stuff, thinking you keeping yourself. You ain't keeping a doggone thing. That's the most high that's keeping you. It's the most high that's preserving you. Without him, nothing what you put in your body, drink or eat, or however you exercise, will keep you healthy. 
He is the one that's doing it. Give him the acknowledgement of what he's doing in your life when it comes even to your health, how he is keeping you and how he is preserving you. Preserving you is how it is maintaining health. That's what preserving is. You're preserved by the most high. You ain't preserved by the food you eat. It's good to eat wisely now because it's going to give you wisdom on how to eat good things. That's fine. But you give unto, unto him for giving you the wisdom on how to eat and, and appreciate the fact that he is preserving you. You hear what I'm saying? But you don't put that all in your power. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm a healthy person. I go to the gym. I eat these foods. I'm a vegan. I do this. I Get out of that. The Most High is preserving you. Without him, no matter what you eat, you're going to be sick and dead. Just like that. So you got to understand, you, you, we, 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 we take credit for so much stuff. And we think it's a small thing that we take credit for. But guess what? Them small things going to have to be, they're going to have to be broken. Break them ties. Here we go. We got to break some more ties. We got to break some more ties, right? So let's read on. Let's read on. He said, he preserved you and has caused that ye should rejoice and has granted that ye should live in peace with one another. He says he had blessed you with so much. He given you. He has blessed you with overabundance more than what you ever need. He has blessed you with things you don't even have a clue how the Most High is blessing you with. So you should rejoice of all the things that he is doing in your life. You should have this rejoicing spirit within you. You should have it. You know, and he says that also that he granted you, he granted you granted you the things that will bring peace into your lives and that we can have peace with one another. That comes from the most high. That ain't on our own accomplishment. Well, I'm gonna go over here, bro. You know, and I know the situation. I'm gonna go over here and talk to this brother. I'll be the better person. You'll be the better person? Really? Nah. You in the wrong spirit. When that came out of your mouth, you in the wrong spirit. You should rejoice. I praise the Most High for an opportunity to be reconciled to my brother and my sister. And Most High, let me rely upon you. I'm not going to say I'm the better person. Let me rely upon you and your wisdom and your strength and guidance on how to approach this situation. See, you always put it in the Most High's hand. No matter what, you don't sit up here talking about I'm going to be the better person. No, you're the worst person as soon as you said that because you got lifted up in pride thinking you done done something and the Most High is the one that's going to make it all possible. Oh, we're going to find out how he makes it all possible in this next verse. Let's read. I say unto you, verse 21, Mosiah chapter 2, verse 21, I say unto you that if ye should serve him who has created you from the beginning and is preserving you from day to day, from day to day you're being preserved by him, Right? It ain't your health choices that's causing your life to be prolonged. The Most High is doing this. By lending you what? Who? Did you see that? And is preserving you from day to day by lending you breath. Let me tell you something. <laughs> the only time you're going to accomplish something on this earth or in this life or in your lifetime without the most high is if you do it without breathing without breath in your body. But as long as he's putting breath in your body and you're breathing, guess what? It is the most high that's giving you the ability to accomplish anything. And you better honor him in what he's doing in your life. Because when he takes away your breath, the only thing you can do is drop dead and die. You ain't going to accomplish nothing. He is lending you he said, your breath is on loan. And you sitting up here boasting about the stuff you done did, the things you accomplished, and your breath is on loan. <laughs> the thing that gives you ability to become a living soul, they say in Genesis chapter 2. Huh? He said, Adam, he, he, he breathed into, into the nostrils of man and he became a living soul. 
Whatever gives you ability is his breath. His breath gives you ability. Without his breath, you ain't gonna do nothing but die. You ain't even a living soul without his breath. You can't accomplish nothing without his breath. But die. Be dead. Never existed. So we have to understand this. We are all, he is lending us. Look at this scripture. He said he is lending us his breath. His breath is on loan to us. And we act like we are one. We the one. The, the, we the commander of our own ship. We an island. And we did this. And we built this. And we created this. And we did this on our own. In our own strength. It was our wisdom. And our intellect. Not giving any credit to the most high. Huh? Come on. His breath. It's on loan to you. Make sure you take care of it while it's on loan. Because, you know, if you default on that loan, <laughs> it's going to be a different story. Let's continue reading. He said that ye may live and move and do according to your own will. He said even to your own will. His breath gives you the ability to have your own will. You can't move or do whatever without his breath. And even supporting you from the moment, from one moment to another, I say, if ye should serve him with all your whole souls, yet ye would be unprofitable servants. You can serve him with your whole soul, he said right here, and you will still end up being an unprofitable servant. Why is he saying that? Now, there's a precept to that. And that precept, I had wrote that precept down. Where that precept at? That precept is Luke chapter 17, verse 10. That's out of your King James Version Bible. So in case y'all said, hey, we in that King James Version, we're precepting that too. Luke 17 and 10, same thing. Hold on. Why is he calling you an unprofitable servant here if you serve him? It doesn't make sense when you think about it. With your whole soul, yet you will be an unprofitable, an unprofitable servant. Why? Hmm? Why? Think about it. Just think for a moment. Why he said that like that? What he's saying is there. The Most High has done so much for us. There's no way we can repay the debt. We are in debt to the Most High. And if we give him our whole soul, our praise with our whole soul, our whole body, our mind, and everything within us, we are still unprofitable. We still can't pay off that debt that we owe him. You hear what I'm saying? We owe him. What he's saying, no matter what you do, you got to remember you owe him. You owe him your life. You owe him. He's done so much more. You owe him. So no matter what we do, we become unprofitable because why? We're still in debt. If you're in debt, you're unprofitable, right? So we're still in debt to him for all the wonderful things he has done for us. He's redeemed us. You hear what I'm saying? He died for us so that we could be so that we could be born again. You hear what I'm saying? The sacrifices he made each and every day, the things he blesses us with. We have to realize that we are unprofitable. We can't get the big head like we done, we the captain of our own ship because we think we done done something now. Oh, I done praised the most high and I prayed and these people got healed and I baptized people and all this stuff. Now I'm somebody. All right. The most high is going to be patting me on my back. No, you still in debt to the most high. You still in debt. You can't pay off the price he paid. You can't do nothing to pay off that price. That the Most High paid through Yeshia for us and through the Ruach HaKadosh for us. You cannot do a thing to pay off that debt. You are yet unprofitable. So you need to appreciate the Most High with your unprofitable self. Because you can't pay off his debt. He's doing more for you right now as we speak than what you can do with all your might and your soul and anything to praise him. He's doing more right now in one second. Than you could do in a lifetime of praise. We in debt to him. And act like you know that we in debt to him. Stop walking around here like you you are idol God and you running everything. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it all the way down. Because we are in debt unto him, the most high, unto our creator. We are in debt to him. No matter what we do. We cannot pay the price. We cannot, re we cannot even mm, come close to it. So let's go to this next scripture. It says, and behold, all that he requires of you is to keep his commandments. And he has promised that if you will keep his commandments, ye should prosper in the land. Now, we are in debt to the Most High. 
We can never repay him for the debt that we are in to him. But yet, he says, if you keep his commandments, he's going to prosper you. He's going to give you more. He ain't the mafia. So we can't start treating him like the mafia, right? So since he ain't the mafia and we don't need to be treating him like the mafia, then we got to understand that there is a, 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 a word that needs to be in the equation of our life concerning the Most High. And that word is gratefulness. We need to learn how to be grateful. Because look at here. If you owe the mafia a debt, they going to make you pay it back with interest, right? And they going to hound you and probably take your family's life and your life until they get it paid, right? But here we go. We owe the most high, and yet he still prospers us. <laughs> what? He ain't even asking us to pay the debt back. He's prospering us by obeying his commandments. He, we owe him, and yet he still prospers us. Huh? That ain't like man. Man don't do that to you. Man will hold you accountable. Man gonna want his with some interest back on it. You got a bank loan? You owe that bank? You don't ever pay the exact amount of the loan back to the bank, do you? It's always coming back with some interest, right? It's always gonna come back with some more. They're like, oh, you're gonna pay this all back plus some more. You hear what I'm saying? But here we go. We are in a state of still owing the most high. We cannot pay him back, but yet he prospers us. <laughs> you can't get no joy on that. I don't know how to get no joy up in your life because that right there, whoo! That right, hey, what you say? Hey, what I owe him, but yet he still prospers me. Oh my goodness! Oh, I want to get on the mountaintop and just whoo! Shout it out! I'm just oh, this guy. Come on, watch this. Watch this. Ooh. Woo, come on here. He said, and he has promised that if you would keep his commandments, that ye should prosper in the land. And he never doth vary from that which he has said. He don't take, he don't take back his word. He don't double talk you. He ain't no con artist. He ain't going to tell you he, gonna be, be, he, he ain't going to be nickel slick. Because if he nickel slick, we can get that penny change. But no, we ain't got to do all that kind of stuff. He ain't going to try and con you out of anything. Say, tell you one thing and do another. You hear what I'm saying? He going to back up what he says. So when he says he's going he gonna to prosper you, it's going to be well. Guess what? He's going to prosper you. It's going to be well in spite of the debt we owe. It says, therefore, if you do keep his commandments, he doth bless you and prosper you. He going to bless you and prosper you. You hear what I'm saying? So not only, not only do you have to, you know, uh, have a fear of trying to pay back a loan that you got from man or from a bank or whatever, or whatever, right? You got to make sure you get that paid back because they, they start charging you with the late payments. They start hitting you on every little thing, right? So it makes, they make it, the, the loan is what? Grievous, right? It becomes grievous, right? It becomes something you just want to just hurry up and pay off and just get it over with. Just get it done because it becomes grievous the way the way the system set up. <laughs> I ain't never seen nobody say, I'm, I'm so happy I get to pay this loan back. I'm paying it back. I'm so happy to pay you back more than what I got from you. I, you know, I don't know too many people who get, you know, excited about that. And if they do. Have them get a checkup with their doctor. We got to get some things checked out about them, okay? So here, right here, the Most High says, even though you're in debt to me, even though you owe me, huh? I'm still going to bless you. It means I'm going to bring you in a state of happiness. I'm going to want you to be happy. I'm going to set it up in your life for happiness to be revealed so that you can be happy and I'm going to prosper you. I'm going to bless you with happiness and with success, <laughs> even though you owe me. Now, that's the kind of bank I like to bank in. How about that? Bank on the most high. That's the bank right there, worth banking in right there. The most high, the creator of all things. Huh? He wants you happy and he wants you successful, even though you owe him. And you cannot repay him. Mm, mm, mm. And he said, and now, and now, look at here. And now, oh, in the first place. See, 
We got these people out here thinking they they the stuff. They stuff don't stink. They 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 the commander of their own ship. They running things how they want to run. They 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 taking advantage of the most highest people. They treating people any kind of way. They driving their own ship. They running it according to the course of their will, right? You got these people out there that think everything that they done built up, they built up themselves. They doing it. They looking out for themselves. They making sure you sow into them and not them into you. Everything they doing, they building up their own kingdom, so to speak, right? So, so if they have this mentality, for you that have this mentality that think you done built all this success on your own, and you built this empire, and you built this ministry, and you've done this stuff and all this other stuff, and you can't let it go because it's something that you done built up. You felt that you built up by the sweat of your hands and the blood and tears and whatever else. Guess what? Let me tell you something. Let me go back to this scripture where the Most High is going to remind you. Let's go back to this reminder here in this scripture. And he says, and now in the first place, he says, now we're going to take it back to the first place, the place before you was born. Uh -huh. We're going to take it back to the first place, huh? The, faith, the place before you was even in your mother's womb, huh? We're going to take it back to the first place. The place where you weren't even in existence. Huh? We're going to take it back to the first place. huh? The place where the creator created you without anything else. If you were not created by the creator, you couldn't have the empire you had. You couldn't have the abilities you have. So he said you got to go back to the first place and remember that you were created. You didn't create yourself. You didn't make yourself. You were created by the most high. Go back to the first place and remember, you are not an island. You are not alone. And you don't stand alone. You can't have your power overcome the power of the most high. He was the one that empowered you. So you are not powered. You are empowered. How are you respecting that power? How are you honoring that power? He said, go back to the first place. <laughs> I created you. You didn't create yourself. Stop acting like you God. Stop acting like you your own God. You idol worshiping yourself. Lifting yourself up. Telling others to lift you up too. Feeling good about it. Little priest of Mahan Nimrod gonna call himself Marduk. Declare that he is the son of God. Huh? You lifting yourself up in pride. Trying to exalt yourself above the throne. You better realize the throne created you and you didn't create yourself. Go back to the first place like the scripture said. He created you and granted unto you your lives and he gave you your lives. He gave you your life. Huh? Your bre his breath is on loan. He's lending his breath to you to live. You can't even pay the loan back on the breath, let alone all the other stuff he done gave you and blessed you with. Come on with it, man. For which ye are indebted unto him. You are in debt unto the Most High for what he did in the beginning. What he did in the first place. When he created you and gave you life, you are in debt unto him. No matter what you do, you can't pay that back. From the first thing he did, the first place. Oh, man, we got, man, what you what? Man. Woo! Stop playing, church. Time to stop playing. It's, stop. it's time to stop playing. You got to stop playing. We can't. Ooh, we. And like, watch this. Verse 24. He said, and secondly, <laughs> he doth require that ye should do as he had commanded you. Okay? For which, if ye do, he doth immediately bless you. Okay? And therefore, he had paid you. He blessed you. He paid you. You in debt to him. He paid you. And you in debt to him. He's still paying you. You in debt to him. And he's paying you. And you ungrateful. Trying to tell people you don't did this thing on your own. This is something you had started. This is something that you built. This is the church that I have built. Really? 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 He's paying you. And you in debt to him. You better show some appreciation. Gratefulness needs to show up on the scene. And he's, I'm telling you, you guys out there, you, you going out and you attacking these ministries, you, you, you putting these names out here, you trying to attack these people to put these two books together, and you know we walking in the spirit. We, you know, according to these books, 
that this true Zion is coming up, that these 144 are coming up, you know, oh man, this prophetess, we getting ready to, oh man, we getting ready to take this earth. He's getting ready to manifest us. We are the true children of light, and we're getting ready to be manifested right before your eyes. And we're going to shame you openly because we're going to uncover all this darkness you done did. We're going to cover all this hidden sin you done did. We're going to uncover all that because that which is done in the dark is going to be brought into the light. And who's going to be the light that's going to be brought into? We're going to be the light, and we're going to expose you for who you are. That's what we're going to do. That's how it is. Y'all sitting up here acting a fool. Got this word, this mercy, and this grace, and all this goodness, and this most high is still blessing you when you're in debt to him and you still acting a F O O L with it. You're going to make me catch a case. That's why I got on my stripes. Stripes on. I'm about to catch a case on y'all. Y'all, woo! <laughs> Come on. Woo! Don't appreciate. Unappreciate. Ungrateful. Just idol worshippers, men pleasers, get them. And therefore, he had paid you, and ye are still what he had paid you. Look here, and ye are still what indebted unto him. You better know where your butter is bred. You better know where your blessings come from. You better know where your prosperity comes from. You better know and you better acknowledge. You better understand. You better appreciate it. Don't bite the hand that feeds you because a lot of you are doing it. You're cutting off your blessings from your actions and the way you are treating people and the way you are treating yourself and raising yourself up and lifting yourself up trying to be somebody important. You better shut it down. Shut it all the way down. Shut it down. Said he and you are still indebted unto him and are and will be forever and ever. You can never pay that debt back. He's telling you, you are debt to him forever and ever. Stop acting like you the, you the boss man. Stop acting like you the man. Stop acting like you the creator. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing but a bunch of dust. Huh? And you in debt. Huh? You unprofitable as a servant. You in debt. You in a debt that you can't even pay back. And are and will be forever and ever. Therefore, of what have ye to boast? What can you boast about? Everything you have, he gave to you. You came in this world naked, you're going to leave naked. If you think you don't built all this stuff up and you got all this stuff on your own, take it with you when you leave. Why come you can't take it with you when you leave? You be ready. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That casket still got your clothes and all that other stuff in it. Everything that was in the casket is still in the casket. You ain't took nothing. Naked. You just left out naked. They ain't take nothing with you. If that bad, you should be able to take everything you have with you. You should be able to take all your wealth with you. You should be able to take all your success with you. You should be able to take your big old ministry that's supporting you with you. That treats you like a god instead of a man. And it's their fault for lifting you up, but it's your fault for being lifted up in your head, in your pride. You need to humble yourself and realize you're in debt to the Most High, a debt that you cannot pay forever and ever. But he still blesses you. Don't take advantage of his blessings. He says, and now I ask, can you say all of yourselves? Can you say all of yourself? Can you, can you, can you produce something that you, you did on your own without the Most High's ability? Can you produce something you did on your own without the most highest help? Can you do any? Can, can, where is it? Where? 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 I don't see it there. I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see it. Uh, no, no, I don't see it. No, it's empty. Empty. I don't see nothing. You can't produce one thing that you've done without the most highest help. Not one, because he give you the ability to breathe. He give you the, he loans his breath to you to give you ability. And that breath going through your body gives you the ability to accomplish anything in this life. You stop taking advantage of what the Most High is doing in your life. You stop claiming credit for what the Most High is doing. And give him the honor and credit for what he's doing in your life. 
That's why we're supposed to give honor where honor is due. And he, he is due a whole lot of honor that most of y'all ain't giving up to him. Y'all planning and plotting against him. Plotting against his people. Using his people. Come on. Get man. Yeah. And now I ask, can you say all of yourselves? I answer you, nay. You cannot say that you are even as much as the dust of the earth. Look at here. <laughs> what? What? You got what kind of worth? What kind of power? How important are you? Uh huh. You what? 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 What'd you say? What? Huh? Yet ye were created of the dust of the earth, but behold, it belongeth to him who created you, even the dust that he created you with of the earth <laughs> belongs to him. It all belongs to him. Hmm? It all belongs to him. These people talking about how wealthy they are and their wealth numbers and all this other stuff, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a $65 million millionaire, billionaire, whatever else, you know. That don't mean nothing. You ain't nothing without the most high. You still in debt, no matter how much money you got. You can't pay back that debt. And it says, verse 26, it says, And I, even I, whom ye call your king, am no better than ye yourselves are. So he said the leaders cannot exalt themselves better than the people. You can't do that. Self-exaltation, exhortation, you can't lift yourself up like that. No. That, that, that ain't supposed to happen. That ain't supposed to happen. It ain't supposed to happen. So he says, for I am also of the dust. Huh? Because they're the dust just like you. they the dust just like you. And dust begets dust begets dust. Created from the dust and goes back to the dust. And it's all just a bunch of dust. But dust. That's it. And ye behold that I am old and I am about to yield up this mortal frame to his mother earth. Therefore, as I said unto you that I had served you, walking with a clear conscience before the Most High, even so at this time have caused that ye should assemble yourselves together that I might be found blameless and that your blood should not come upon me when I shall stand to be judged of the Most High of the things whereof he hath commanded me concerning you. See, that's the thing. The Most High didn't tell you to be puffed up and lifted up. He told you to hold yourself accountable for what he has given you as a flock, as a people. Everything he's given you, he has also given you an accountability, a responsibility to handle it properly. Are you doing it properly? Or are you going to have a lot of bloodshed on your hands when you stand before the Most High and be judged? Which one are you? Huh? We got to get to this point where we become grateful and we acknowledge Him and we, we understand that without Him we can't do nothing. We, his breath is on loan to us. What makes you think you can be high and lifted up and do your own thing and you can just say how you want to say, speak how you want to speak, do how you want to do, treat the most highest people how you want to treat them and you want to do all this stuff. What makes you think for one instance that you own anything? You don't own nothing. You're in debt. And you're in a debt that you cannot even pay back. That means everything you own can be sacrificed and it still won't pay the debt back. So what do you own? Nada. So for all of you out there who think you something and you're the commander of your own ship and you, you, you doing all this stuff on your own and you getting all this stuff done without the most high, my question to you is, prove it. Shalom, brothers and sisters.